Hello everybody, it's Manola here with Manola's Musings. Manola's Musings. How is everyone? We all doing okay? My voice is a little raspy there. I don't know what's going on. It's not good. It's not good, people. Um, yeah, well, hope, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm doing all right. Uh, it's been eventful the past few days, and then we had we had a hurricane, uh, the Hurricane Eon. It wasn't as bad as, you know, we didn't get as bad as Florida, but we still had it, and we were all hunkered down, and the wind was whipping around, and the rain was coming. <clears throat> there was thunder and lightning in it. It was like the sky was falling down, but we made it out okay. I was doing my weather reports. I was keeping everyone updated, you know. Uh, people trust me to give the weather. They don't trust, you know, the talking heads and the media. I'm the real weather man. You know what I'm saying? Unless, of course, I'm talking about our local weather people here in Charleston. They're wonderful as well. I'm not disparaging them. But, you know, the Weather Channel, you know, those people, and I say people because I wanted to say something else. These people, I tried to check the forecast. You know what they made me do? They made me watch an ad to check the forecast in the middle of a freaking hurricane. Now, that is corrupt. That is corruption. I used to love the Weather Channel. I would watch it religiously. I would sit down. You know, most five-year-olds, they would watch, you know, cartoons or whatever. I was watching the Weather Channel, seeing the tornadoes and the lightning. And I, I, at one point, I think I wanted to be a weatherman. I guess I am a weatherman now. I run my own weather station. It's called the Minovi Weather Station. I just give it to you straight. None of this nonsense at the Weather Channel. Make you watch an ad to check the forecast. you got to be kidding me. Hey, they want you to pay to take the ads off. What if the what if my house had the roof blown off and I, I was trying to check something that you would make me watch an ad? It's corrupt. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we had a storm. It, you know, it, it came through. It, it, it lasted for about, I guess, about 12 hours, and then we were out of it. So thank God everyone was all right. Nothing happened. But those poor people in Florida, I feel bad for them. They really got whacked. Um, really, really bad down there. So, yeah, I feel bad for those folks. Um, what else has been going on? So last week, I went to a... Uh, I was bored. I had nothing to do. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to see if there's any events uh, going on around town. You know, just any... Anything I can see, you know, give me something to do. It was a Friday night. I had no plans. And I was bored. So I looked, and there was, like, a concert going on downtown at this old, I guess it was, an. it's like an Art Deco movie theater called the Riviera. And uh, they had a concert going on. It was this, some, he said he was a blues singer, so this blues guy. I never heard of him before. His name was, I think his name was Jimmy Bond or something or another. And uh, anyway, so I said, oh, I, I kind of like the blues. I think I'll go see that. That'll be fun, right? Anyway, I went and yeah, it was good. It was a good time. It, you know, the venue was cool. I, I like all that old world Art Deco kind of thing. It's, uh, I like that style. It's fascinating to me. Yeah, so it was cool being in there, you know, you're kind of stepping back in time, and they had, he was up there, he was doing his thing, he was a great guitarist, um, really talented with that, the band sounded great. Yeah, it was worth going to see, I think, and uh, <laughs> what really made the experience worthwhile, though, was um, the behavior of the other spectators, you know, I think everyone was out downtown, you know, getting a little boozed up before the show, everyone was kind of feeling, you know, they were dancing around and, you know, the, the demographic of the show skewed a little, uh, a little older than myself, you know, to put it nicely. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, when they, when they got up there and started dancing, there were these three, three or four, uh, three or four ladies up there. They, they were dancing right at the foot of the stage. Like it was a Beatles concert or something. I, I mean, I thought, I thought someone was going to break a hip, but uh, 
But no, nothing happened. They, they sat up there and danced the whole time. It's like they had groupies again. This blues band. It was very, uh, it was very amusing. It was fun to watch. And then, and then, in the middle of the show, this guy starts talking. I don't know. They're in between sets or whatever songs. Excuse me while I take a sip of my coffee. That's good stuff. Dark roast, baby. Black. Nothing else. That's what I stick with. If it's the afternoon, I go to get a coffee. I'll get an Americano, but that's about it. I like espresso as well. And in Greece, when you're on the beach, you drink a frappe. You see how the, my mind works, how I just completely change subjects there? But anyway, this guy is in between sets, right? And some lady in the front, she starts yelling something. I don't know. She's like, she's like, Rah, rah, give me the mic, give me the mic. He's, this guy's visibly confused. And this lady, I don't know why you give her the microphone. She could have said anything. She could have yelled fire in the theater. You don't know what she's going to freaking say. Anyway, she goes, I'm here with the Charleston Blue Society. And we have events on, you know, Saturday the 22nd and blah, blah, blah. And this lady just starts plugging her little organization right in the middle of this guy's set. And, of course, me, I said, Sam! <laughs> I mean, what, what is the audacity? And this guy's like, and she, he like kept trying to take the mic back. She's like, the Charleston Blue Society. And everyone's like, get her out of here. It was very bizarre. And the guy's like, man, that was a plug if I've ever seen one. Like, yeah, the hell lady you can't just get up there start plugging your nonsense it's not it's not your show you want people to show up but maybe you should have had one of your people performing there how about that why wow, she's gonna listen to the show and then she's gonna get upset i'm gonna get hate mail all hate mail please direct it to uh please direct it to sam english he's my uh my friend, he's my publicist, and uh, direct it to him, please. Thank you. You'll be able to find him around. Um, yeah, but otherwise, the concert was great. It was actually, it was very entertaining. Even that lady spouting off her plugs for the... That was so weird. People were so strange. I went to dinner beforehand with my father. We went, we were, we were at Upper King, and I think I misjudged the distance of where this place was. I was like... Well, it's on King Street, you know, it's not that far. I should know my way around town by now, you know. I've only been here for 22 years. Uh, he's like, the Riviera, that's way down there. I'm like, no, it's it's right there. There's this other place, very similar, called, I think it's called the American Theater. I think I got too confused. He's like, are you getting there? I was like, I think I'll walk. He's like, you're going to walk? I'm like, yeah, I'll walk. Well, what's a big deal? You know, a mile and a half later, uh, I almost missed the show. I was, <laughs> was very close to not getting there. And then, of course, he had to walk back, and it was uh, it was fun. I had a good time. I went by myself because, you know, I, I do these things. I, I like to do things by myself just for uh, entertainment purposes. It was entertaining. What can I say? Um, I can use a haircut pretty soon. And, you know, I, I was talking to I was looking around at these, these barber shops, and why are they so freaky? I mean, have you seen some of these places? My father's always asked me, why don't you go this place and that place? I'm like, no. The places that they... I don't want to go to a barber shop that, A, it looks like the equipment hasn't been updated since the 1800s. You know, these chairs, it's like they... The stuffing's coming out. You got to wear that, that, that shawl that catches the hair that looks like it hasn't been washed in 60 years. Has stripes on it. I mean, really, one of those bar any of those barber shops that have the, the the swirly thing in the front. I don't go to those. Those are always the freaky ones. But the, I mean, there's hair everywhere. There's usually some animal around, or or they're really some of them are really big in the taxidermy. I mean, I don't know why they associate getting your hair cut with looking at you know dead deer or. I mean, I went into one place, I had a bobcat staring at me. It's just very odd. I don't know what the deal is. Puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. It's just very strange. I don't know what the deal is with taxidermy in the barbershop. I mean, you walk in there, it's like, what kind of freak owns this place? <laughs> it got, 
They got bobcats and badgers and raccoons. It's like, jeez. I don't, I don't understand it. I'm not saying I'm against taxidermy. It's just like, what's the correlation between my hair and a taxidermy? Can you imagine working in one of those places? You got dead animals staring at you. Equipment was used by Sweeney Todd. And then you're, you're inhaling a bunch of hair. All That's just horrible. All those places, they're like musty and outdated. And I don't like to go to those places. I like to go to a nice barber shop that's modern. You know, if it has the swirly thing, I don't go to it. That's my thing. Uh, I, I take, I, I don't want to have to go through the whole barber shop experience where, you know, they got that stuff sitting in that blue liquid, the barber side. I know they all do that, but I'm just trying to make a picture for you. It's like, why is it blue? What happened to it? What you put in there? Why you have so many? You only use the one. Why you got so many tools in there? Huh? What is that stuff for anyway? And then talc. You inhale some of that stuff. It gets stuck in your lungs for 40 years. What, what do they use that for? I don't understand. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I like to go to a modern barber shop. Well, where they, they give you a drink when you sit down. They don't look at you like you got three heads. <laughs> um, you know, I was thinking about the other day. I was looking at maps because what else do you do when you're bored? You look at geography and look at maps. At least I do because I find them very fascinating. I, I love geography. I love just like going on Google Maps and just looking around at different islands and stuff, places I've been. Places I'd like to go, you know that kind of thing. And I was looking at uh, I was looking at the Pacific Ocean. Now, the Pacific Ocean—I don't know if you know this—is very big. It's huge. And I was looking at Easter Island, and you know that—that's way, you know, that's that's pretty close to South America. I think it's owned by Chile. It's like right there by South America. But those statues, the Easter Island heads, they were said they were created by the Polynesians, who are from like way on the other side of the ocean. So I mean, it's like nobody, uh, yeah, nobody gives these guys credit. I don't understand it. These guys, they they settled all these islands. They settled, you know, like New Zealand and stuff, and it. I'm going to reveal my lack of knowledge here, but I mean, Easter Island, all these islands, they settled them. They didn't know what was out there. These people were freaking badass. They they built these boats and they just set sail. They, they didn't know what was out there. They just said, oh, there's water. I'm going to go find some land. They didn't know what was going to happen. They just literally, they could you imagine? You hop in a boat and then you just sail off. Maybe you find land. More than likely, you know, you just end up floating around for, I mean, they, nobody gives these guys credit. I just, they got to give these people more credit. Everyone talks about the explorers and yes and that. Yeah, they knew there was stuff out there. They knew eventually they were going to hit stuff. But these Polynesians, they didn't know what was out there. And they settled these islands and they made these statues and stuff. It's very impressive. Nobody wants to talk about that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Nobody nobody gives them credit. I'm giving you credit now. They for the you know the Polynesian explorers, y'all y'all did a good job. What else can I talk about? Um hmm. I'm at a loss. What am I looking at that? You gotta be something, Manoli. You gotta talk about something. I can't end the show now. It's only it, has, it hasn't even been fifteen minutes. It's gonna be, oh man! I finally ran out of things to say, people. I know it's shocking. Nobody ever thought it was gonna happen. Nobody, nobody ever expected this moment to occur. But, but it's here. I'm, I, for once in my life, I have nothing to say. Oh man. Here's one for you. Uh, you know, there's these Disney fanatics, these Disney adults. Uh, you know, I think I think the epidemic is starting to get worse. Uh, Disney shut down for a day due to the storm, and 
it's the right decision, but it was like, you know, they, they had lost a loved one. I don't know what to, how to describe it. It's like, you can't get a dole whip for one day and it's it's the end of the world. Um, I saw one thing on Reddit and this is an older post, so maybe you've seen it. I don't know how many of my listeners um, do Reddit, but this is, I'm going to pull this up for you, so just bear with me here for a minute. Is the, hold on. Disney adult wedding. Reddit post. They call them the Disney adults because they're, <coughs> excuse me, they're, uh, you know, they're adults obsessed with Disney. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, draw your own conclusions. Um, all right, here it is. Here it is. I'm going to discuss this with you. And I'll let you, I'll let you just, uh, just think about that. The Twitter debate attracted comments from many fans who defended the choice. Oh, hold on, we even got to that point. One of you went viral for comparing the fan base of Disney to a form of religion. Let's see. Where is the post? This is this is what drives me crazy about the internet and the articles. They got to write a freaking thesis paper before they show you what you're looking for. It's freaking sicko. I don't understand why they do it. Yeah, I did it. I didn't come here to read an essay on what happened. I just came to find the thing. All right, here it is. This is from Reddit. This is called, Am I the A-Hole? Um, Am I the A-Hole for not having catering at my wedding? Me and my fiancé just... I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not reading all this nonsense. Me and my fiancé just got married two months ago and we had our dream wedding. Everything was perfect. Did I mean everything? My parents and his parents helped us pay for a great chunk of the wedding. So we would be debt free. And we are so eternally grateful for that. The issue, the issue arose about a month and a half ago. And my aunt, ooh, the aunt's getting involved, started posting on Facebook about how disappointed she was with the whole ordeal. And a few of the guests sided with her. Oh, there's a controversy here. The aunt is, the aunt is, as they say, as people my age say, she's spilling the tea. The aunt is spilling the tea, as they say. I think that's out, but I, 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 I'm behind on this stuff, <clears throat> as they say. Anyway, the aunt's posting on Facebook. Background. This is back to the post. Background. My fiance and I are huge Disney fans. We travel to Disney World as much as we can throughout the year. Disney is such an important part, not only to us, but also our marriage. Uh, no comment. The issue was with our decision to not offer catering services slash bar services at our wedding due to routing the money towards having a wedding. Minnie and Mickey make appearances at our special day. The cost to have both Minnie and Mickey for a good chunk of time, 30 minutes, was almost exactly what our parents allotted to our catering budget. So we scheduled an appearance during our first dance and our wedding photos for going surf boo, though, and this is in parentheses, though there were plenty, in all caps, of facilities at the venue where people could eat. My parents were still very supportive of us, but everyone else is being passive aggressive about it on Facebook. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Info. To those asking if the guests were warned, we clearly outlined in the invitations that there was food available at the venue. You have to say what the venue is. Um, <clears throat> that, I'm sorry. It was clearly outlined in the invitations that there was food available at the venue. We didn't exactly spell out every restaurant's menu, all caps, but it was certainly mentioned. <clears throat> there were also wet vending machines available throughout. Vending machines, oh, that's nice. Uh, that's so nice. Uh, the vending machine at the wedding, beautiful. <clears throat> Edit two. For everyone saying that's too much for 30 minutes, I want to clarify. There was two 30-minute sessions on different days. $2,750 was, was the cost for one session. Now, I don't need to make fun of this person, but... I think if you expect people to, A, go to a destination wedding, which I don't like to begin with. Uh, 
as I, you know, piss off everybody that listens that's ever had a destination wedding. Um, <clears throat> just not for me. But if you're going to have a destination wedding, expect people to, you know, travel to Disney World and, you know, pay to stay at a, you know, hotel and all that stuff. But, you know, I think feeding them would be a nice idea. But no. No, they don't get food, those people. Those people, they don't get fed. They, you know what they get? They get a vending machine. Go spend three fifty on a Dasani. Three fifty for Dasani. That's what they charge you. Dasani. It's like drinking jet fuel. It's the worst water. Anyway, yeah, that's what you get at the wedding. And then maybe you get a bag of Doritos. That's nice. Or maybe you go to Casey's Corner get a hot dog. That's what you get. You have to pay for it. It's out of your pocket. No, no, they don't get to be fed. They're guests who travel all this way to, to see you. Um, no, that's not. They don't get. They don't get food. They get. You know what they get? They get. Uh, they get nothing. Why would you even show up? I don't understand it. Why? Why even invite people? You clearly don't care about them, or you don't care enough to feed them. So why would you even invite them? Why don't you just have your little wedding, your perfect day with Mickey and Minnie, two sweaty people in a plastic mouse costume? Three thousand dollars for that, uh, and you know why even why even invite people? He could have saved. He could have had thirty more minutes with how much it would have sent cost to send out the invitation. But no, and he and Mickey, you know, it, you could have just taken the picture with them while you were in the park for free. This doesn't really make it doesn't make it make sense to me. I just I just have to question the. It's like why even invite anyone? Just. Uh, you know, have your Disney wedding and uh, shut up. It's clearly, it's all about you. You don't want to feed people. Imagine you go to a wedding and they said, there's a vending machine over there and enjoy. People in their weddings, I don't understand it. It's all about them. Well, they aren't the ones getting married. Yeah, but if you're gonna if you're gonna invite people, you have to make it worth the while. You know what I'm saying? I'm with the aunt. In this situation, I, I, I think, hey, I think it's hilarious that she started airing the laundry on Facebook and then other people started chiming in. Like, <laughs> you imagine? <laughs> this aunt's like, man, I'm, I wonder what she said. Man, I'm so glad I went to this Disney wedding. You know, I really enjoyed the dinner of Doritos that I had to pay for at the vending machine. And then some cousin chimes in. Yeah, I really appreciated, you know, the fact that we had to pay for, you know, some food over at Pecos Bill instead of being fed ourselves. And then everyone starts piling on. Hey, listen, people, if you're going to spend the budget that your parents gave to you for catering on seeing, you know, sweaty people in sweaty people in mouse costumes, then uh, I think you deserve what you get. So moving on. I just thought that was interesting, that whole situation. Now, draw your own conclusions. Maybe you side with the couple. I'm not going to say anything if you do, but you're wrong. Um, you know, I'm right about everything. It's what you people need to understand. This is not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm very fair. I'm not a I'm not biased person, but I am right. So, yeah. By the way, football's on. Um, I woke up this morning. Woke up this morning. Gotcha. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my voice today. People are going to say, he's smoking. It's not it. Um. Anyway, but I woke up this morning. Checked my fantasy lineup. I saw I had Jarvis Landry in there. And there was an England game. Why did they do this to me? Uh. That was horrible, by the way. That was not right at all. I'm sorry to the people who wrote that song. And I apologize to David Chase for ruining one of the songs that he used in The Sopranos. Um, why do they do this? Why do the football people think we need to have games in England? They don't like football over there. They don't want to see it. We don't need to. It just ruins the lineup. It ruins the whole experience for us over here. You know, the, we're the bread and butter for the NFL people. Are you listening here? They're not going to appreciate us over there. And they're too busy 
it too busy watching football and doing what they do over the, their football. Keep the games over here. I don't know. I don't understand why they do that. And why why they have to be played? What time is it over there? And 9 a.m. What is that? The game, the kickoff with 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's what, five hour difference? So what, you start, you kick off at two o'clock? Why can't you make it prime time for them? What, they have they have some kind of event go on after? Where do they play this stuff? I don't understand why the NFL does this. I don't understand it. I don't understand a lot of things about the NFL, but, you know, point is, is that I had someone in my lineup that I didn't want to start. And what do you know? Four points. Four points. Why don't you just four points? You take your four points and you just just abysmal. Thank you, Jarvis Landry. Thank you for that. Thank you for your great contribution to the calls. Well, it's your fault. You didn't check in times. I'm sorry. I have a life. It's okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, I'm not gonna get all. I'm not going to go all dark side on you, but I, I do wish I was doing better at fantasy. My record, I'm 1-2. I suppose it could be worse. There's somebody in the league who's 0-3, but anyway. So, <clears throat> man, my throat, I don't know what's going on. You're going to have fun listening to this, people. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to cut it for me. Uh, I need to go watch football. And, oh, yeah, the 1 o'clock games that start in 15 minutes or 16, if you want to be specific about it. So I think I'm going to go watch that. And I have to go deliver a suit. So, uh, yeah, I've had enough of you people. Okay? Um, and I'll lay out. Thank you. Goodbye.